Kelly Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and today I have the pleasure of doing a video for you that was a design that was created by Ashley at our Hagerstown lo headquarters location during our creative time and what she did was take some of the newer beads which are called nibbits and created a Rivoli bezel around a crystal for the design. So we're calling this the nibbit bezel. And if you need any of the materials to make this nibbit bezel, you can go to the left-hand side here to the little drop-down menu. From there, you can get all the links to order the nibbits online from us or any of the seed beads or the crystals or chain or anything like that. Also, if you don't happen to have those little drop-downs on the side, underneath the video, there's usually a description about what the video contains, what techniques are being showed. Underneath that, there's a little button that you can click on that says show more. Click that show more button and it'll give you links to um, buy all the purchase or purchase all of the materials online from me. So to do Ashley's pendant, we have kind of a couple alternatives. I have a bigger and a smaller pendant. The smaller pendant here does not include any seed beads between it. There is a 12 millimeter Rivoli in the center and then all around the outside are the nib bits. And the nib bits um, that we'll be using, we'll be using 20 nib bits total. If you wanna do a 14 millimeter Rivoli, you can either stick to 20 nib bits or what you can do is add one more and add 22, 11 on each side and not have the seed beads in between. So that kind of gives you an option to play with. To do the design, I'm gonna be doing the bigger one here with the seed beads inside. And I'm gonna be using white lila gold luster nib bits. And I'm gonna be using 20 of those total. In addition to my nib bit, I have a 14 millimeter Rivoli so the bigger Rivoli size, and that is in the Crystal Labrador. So it's the Potomac Crystal um, Rivoli, and it is the Crystal Labrador color, which is a nice silver backing that's done in the Czech Republic. To kind of brighten up the whole design, I have some 15-0 seed beads in the uh, Crystal Labrador color. So this is the Crystal Labrador full in those seed beads. If you do want to keep it more of that golden tone, this was the champagne color, the Duracoat uh, galvanized champagne in the 15 O's. So I'm going to be brightening up doing another nibbit here in that white lila gold. And Ashley's here has that smoky, um, smoky quartz 12 millimeter in the middle and then that nice turquoise Picasso going around making it a little bit more earthy. She used 11 O's at the top of hers. In my example here I used uh, the 15 O's in the design so I just kept with the 15 O's for the actual bezel part. I'm going to be stringing the whole thing on some green wildfire beading thread in point zero zero six. And I have two needles sitting here, really you only need one, um, but if you get two ready or you have two smaller pieces of thread left over from another project, you're going to use about 20 inches um, of thread on each needle or about 40 inches total when you're working with it. You may also want to have a thread burner handy. I use the Thread Zap 2 a lot. That's going to make it a lot easier for you to get the thread off the spool. And then when it comes time to actually thread the needle, you can take a needle nose pliers, kind of squeeze down the end of it, and that'll make it easier for you to thread the needle. So to get started, I want to count out my two groups of 10 of my nibbits, and I want to get about 40 inches of thread onto one of my needles. So I've got my two piles here of my nibbits and I have again about 40 inches of thread. If you have some thread ends that you want to use up, you can use two needles and have two groupings of 20 inches of thread too. That's another option for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my 10 nibbits. So the nibbits are brand new and they look almost like a piece of pie. They have two holes, one through the top and one through the bottom. Naturally, they make a really, really easy bezel. So the cool thing about this is it's really simple to make. I'm going to be picking up 10 of my nibbits with a 15-0 seed bead in between each one. So you're not going to overthink it, you just have your pile there of your 10. And you want to make sure as you're working with these that the second hole also goes the whole way through. Sometimes with the um, fine manufacturing Sometimes some of the holes can get blocked and you want to make sure of that before you get too far into your project. 
And that's going to be the case with any multiple hole bead. We have videos on our website showing exactly how the beads are produced and watching them in production makes it um, totally understandable why sometimes you get a super duo or such with a blocked hole. So I've got those 10 nibbits onto my thread with a 15-0 in between each. I'm going to also put a 15-0 at the end of that grouping. Pushing it down then towards the base or towards the bottom thread. I'm going to leave about an inch of thread left and simply tie a knot. Right over left and then left over right. I'm making sure that I'm just tying the knot into the same area. So I have my knot kind of going over itself there. I'm going to pull it back out and tie it again. Pull nice and tight. And then you have your first start of your bezel. So the last bead that we put on is a seed bead. So you know that the knot between the seed bead and the bezel is going to be that the thread direction is actually going towards the nib bit. I'm going to sew through the first nib bit that we put on, which is going to put two strands of thread through that first hole. What I'm going to do now is step up from the first hole of the nib bit to the second hole. This is going to expose a little bit of thread on the side, but you won't see it once it's made. The thread then reverses and comes out the opposite way. And we're going to go through the second hole of the nibbit, just adding in a 15 0 as well. If you want to do the 12 millimeter Rivoli and the smaller version here, you're just going to sew the nibbits right next to one another, not picking up an 11, or a, sorry, a 15 0 seed bead. I figure I would do the seed bead in between because that shows you guys an alternative to that original design there. You're going to continue around the whole way, adding in all of those 15 0 seed beads. This is quite possibly one of the easiest ways to bezel a Swarovski crystal that I have ever done. So kudos to Ashley for coming up with this super nice and easy and friendly design. It's a, one of those good ones that if you have a friend that wants to bead, but you can't quite talk them into that, this is very simple. All they need to be able to do is count to 10. And if they can sew on a button, they can make some jewelry. So here I have the whole first portion of my nib bit bezel. The crystal will eventually sit inside of those nib bits. And if I kind of put it on the outside here, you can see how sparkly and shiny that will be. It also gives you a good idea, the color difference, going from that mint luster to the silver backed to the gray color, kind of how that changes up the design, brightens it up or darkens it up. What I'm gonna do now is actually build the exact same thing in a whole another piece. So with this original strand, I'm going to go in with my thread burner. I'm going to leave about three inches and burn off the end of the thread. Go ahead then and just stick that to the side and you're going to grab your next grouping of your 10 nibbits and go ahead and start to create that original, just like we did the original ring, you're going to create one more ring. So I've created that second loop and I'm getting ready to add my last of my 15 OC beads. I'm going to go ahead and add that in, coming out then one of the nib bits. What I'm going to do now is actually sew these two rings together. Naturally, because of their shape going in kind of like a pie shape, that they're thicker at the end and thinner at the middle, and they have that triangular shape, and it's going to be a really natural fit for the crystal Rivoli, which has a kind of gradient to it, to sit really nicely inside these nib bits. So we're just going to kind of back one on top of the other. 
To back one on top of the other, you'll see a tiny bit of thread between each of the nib bits. By the time you have it on, you really do not see that at all. If that drives you crazy, you can go ahead and put in, especially if you're using seed beads here and it creates a little bit bigger of an opening, you can go ahead and put an extra two seed beads in between each section as well. To start out, I'm not going to worry about the Rivoli. I'm going to pick up the original end here and I'm going to hold it so that the thread ends are pretty much opposite one another. So I have that original thread end that we were working with and then I have the nib bit, um, uh, the nib bit loop excuse me, that I'm working on. What I'm going to do is take my thread from the one section of nib bits over to the opposite nib bit section. That's going to pull those two and kind of connect them. When you open them up, you'll see those two just kind of hanging out together in a loop. From there, because I have two thread ends here, I'm just going to tie a knot and get that connection point nice and secure. So I'm tying a knot between the original thread end and the loop basically section that I just made. Now what I'm going to do is continue on with connecting these together. So my thread came through the first nibbit and what I'm going to do now is actually bring it through um, in a circular fashion through the next one. So I'm from the original side over to the second side and I'm going to go back through the original nibbit. Again, I'm going to see a little bit of thread on each side, but I'm not going to worry about that. Taking my needle and thread that, I'm going to sew through the next 15 and the next nib bit on the right hand side. Jumping over then to the left, we're going to sew through the nib bit and just the nib bit, not the seed bead. And come out, circle around and go through the nib bit that our thread was originally coming out of and sew out. So basically our thread is going around in a circle and circling around that nib bit which will secure the two together. After circling through the nib bit then, we are going to go ahead on to the next one. Sewing through the 15 and the nib bit coming out. Then we're going to sew through the nib bit on the opposite side, come out, circle around, back through the nib bit. If you want to at that same time, sometimes you can also sew through the next 15 out and the next nib bit. And come on out. As I get to the point where I'm almost kind of halfway, that's when I'm going to get ready to actually slide my crystal in. So I have a couple more passes to do, sewing back around and just circling around. So you'll basically always have an extra strand through the right hand side there of the nib bits because I'm always sewing through the 15 and the nib bit on that right side before going in and connecting to the left. So I'm just basically circling around. If you know square stitch, you're basically doing a square stitch to connect the two together. All right, so about that kind of halfway point. And what I'm going to do at that halfway point is take my Rivoli, kind of drop it in there, and just hold it in the center for now. Come back and continue on. Again, if you don't have the seed beads in there, you're just going from one nib bit to the next and connecting them together. If it does drive you nuts that you see a tiny bit of thread in there, then you can go ahead and, like I said, add two 15 0 seed beads between each section here. So as I would come out the nib bit, I would add two 15 0s in here 
and then sew through to the left hand side. After each pass to it and each kind of go circling around, I do grab and do a nice tight pull between each of my beads here. And sew through to the next section. And I'm almost back around to the starting side. I've got about three more to go. That's why I said it's kind of great that this whole thing, you can see pretty much just took as long as the video is to make. It's that simple. So there's a bunch of starter threads kind of here at the top. Two of those are from the middle. What I'm going to do with those middle strands, both in the front and the back, is simply burn those down with a thread burner. The thread that's at the top then, the one that was on the outer edge, I'll use that to tie my thread end onto and end off my thread that way. So I'm through my last nib bit here. I'm circling around, adding them that way. As I come out this last nib bit, kind of move those threads out of the way, I'm going to make my bail. So there's two ways to make the bail. You can either make the bail that you have one strand, or there's multiple ways. You can either make that you have one or however many strands you want coming out between one nib bit, or you can do one loop on either side of one nib nib bit, excuse me. So because I just did um, the bigger version, I'm going to make two loops coming out of the nib bit to connect my chain onto. This one here, I made those two loops with 10 C beads. This one that I'm creating with you guys, I'm going to make it with about 15 C beads. So I'm coming out of one of the nib bits here, right out the nib bit. <clears throat> I'm going to pick up a bunch of 15 O seed beads, so I have six on there now. And it depends on what you're going to put this on, that's going to determine how many seed beads you want. So I'll go ahead and put 14 on my needle. I'm then going to take my needle from the one nibbit over to the nibbit on the other side. And that's going to drop those 14 beads there right along the edge. Coming out then that back side, grab 14 more seed beads. And once you have those 14 on, you're going to sew back through the original side. And basically, that makes a loop on either side, which then will come up and you'll put whatever you want through there, whether or not it's a Omega necklace or some chain like these, you can kind of put whatever you want in there. So again, whatever you're going to put it on, that's going to determine if you want to put it on silk cording or a ribbon, that's going to determine how big these loops need to be and how many you're actually using for them. If you want to, you can take your thread them and kind of reinforce these loops going back through them completely. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to take my thread from the first nib bit to the nib bit in the back. Pull that thread end, the original thread end there, kind of towards the back. This one here is one of the thread ends from the center. Take your burner and just simply burn it down nice and small. With the green thread, you're not going to see it. At the top here, I'm going to burn the other thread that somehow made it to the top rather than to the base strand. I'm going to burn that as well. And then with the extra strand, I'm kind of bringing it to the back because in this pendant, especially because it's silver backed versus this one that's see-through, um, there is an actual back to the project. Another fun idea that I thought is that if you do have one that is transparent or even if you want that silver to shine, versus the crystal, you can actually line the back and the front with different colors of nibbits and make it a reversible pendant. 
I'm just going to bring these threads towards the back so that way my knot that I burned down and end is going to be viewed at the back and not at the front. I switch hands to make my square knot. And then because it's a pendant versus a bracelet, I'm not even going to worry about gluing it. If you want to, you can take your super new glue and glue down on it. So the super new glue, you can glue down on the thread. I'm going to go in here and just take the thread ends, burn them down a little bit, and then to secure them, I'm going to burn them flush. That's going to make basically a little bump at the end of the thread, which is going to keep it from coming apart of that knot. And there you have the end of your nibbit pendant. So you have all kinds of different options to go forth when you're working and creating these. And if you want to go along with the actual 12 millimeter, you can go along with the 12 millimeter. If you want to go with the 14, you can put the seed beads between. If you like the look of having the nibbits nice and close, then go ahead and use 11 nibbits when you're working with your 14 millimeter. You can even try this with a 10 millimeter. Um, it's just going to have a really small opening. So I would suggest using seed beads and probably about six of your nibbits if you did want to do it with one of our 10 millimeter crystals. Again, if you need any of the materials to do Ashley's Nibbit bezel here, you can go back to the beginning of the video to the little drop down menu. And at that drop down menu there, we'll have um, links to all the different products that you can purchase online. If you don't see those links, go to the description at the bottom of the page. And from there, you'll be able to get all the links for the Nibbits and some of these new products that we have online as well. Again, if you like watching the videos, like tutorials like these, the seed beading tutorials, some different wire working tutorials, as well as all kinds of different ranges of ideas and new product introductions, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. That way you'll get regular updates on the different um, videos that we do for you. Also, you can always stay connected with us at PotomacBeads.com, as well as on the social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all of those good places, as well as asking to become a member and join our private Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. There, there's a great community of people that love to make jewelry, whether or not it's the seed bead medium or wire working or kind of everything in between, offer great suggestions, help and ideas, and it's a really great community of people. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching and have fun making Ashley's Nibbit Bezeled Pendant.